Hi guys. Uh, my topic is more on EEG, electroencephalographic. It's basically I'm trying to model and categorize the EEG signals and trying to find out the signature of EEG. Normally, uh, you have uh, familiar with ECG because it's very commonly used. And ECG has PQRS waveform, right, which is a <coughs> symbol of a healthy heart. Similarly, EEG uh, is created, uh, the electricity is created in the uh, brain, but it's um, uh, because the brain is very complicated. So it's difficult to find out the exact signature of different actions of the body or the brain. So I'm trying to uh, figure it out. <coughs> so uh, to understand all these things, I have uh, I'm going to start with basic how the uh, bioelectricity is generated, what is EEG, what is the EEG uh, lead system or electrode systems, what are the components of EEG, and then I will give the objective of the research, and I will tell you what are what is my first step. I have I'm going to finish very soon. You know the nervous system is totally based on our neurons. Neurons are the is the basic cell which is used uh, to transmit the signals from one part of the body to another. And uh, this is the uh, figure of a uh, cell that is called neuron. And it has three parts: a cell body, dendrites, and action. If you can see in the figure, the yellow part that is the cell body. This is the cell body, and this long part, which is a kind of you can say you can understand like in technical terms, it's a kind of a transmission line. It's a fiber uh, kind of structure which takes the signal generated here up to the next cell or next uh, another part of the body, and these are called dendrites, which receive the signals from another part of the body. So they receive the signal, it transmit to the another part. One important part is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is basically, uh, I should just say that uh, because uh, there is a concentration difference of the ions inside the membrane and outside the membrane, and it is not conductive to all ions equally, that's why uh, there is created an, uh, I should say, uh, potential in, between the uh, inside the membrane and outside the membrane. Here I have shown the brain structure <coughs> because brain is again uh, uh, where neurons are there. You look, we, if we take the small part of the brain, <coughs> it has millions of neurons, 10 to power 10 to 11 neurons in the human brain. If you look, this is the neuron. If you concentrate on this part, these are uh, the end of the action, which is called synapses. And if we consider on this one, <coughs> from here the electrical signal goes to the another part of the body. Here, if you check, uh, this is the uh, more clear diagram here. And here is the membrane, which has the channels from where ions can move from inside to outside and outside to inside. But the mobility of ions depend upon the uh, ion uh, density plus it also depends <coughs> upon the potential inside. So this creates an action potential. I will show you how action potential is created. And once action potential is created, it transmits to the another part of neuron, and then it propagates throughout the body. <coughs> Normally, a cell membrane has a resting potential, which is minus 70 <coughs> millivolts. Okay? Now, suppose we stimulate some potential over here. So as soon as it is stimulated, but it is not goes up to threshold, it has no effect. So this is called sub-threshold potential or sub-threshold phenomena that if even if I am trying to increase this potential due to any means, any stimulus, it doesn't reach to the threshold, so it will come back. But suppose it reaches to the threshold, a positive potential is created for momentarily and come back. This is called charging, this is called discharging. 
and this takes place. So whenever our uh, <coughs> stimulation potential, stimulating potential goes more than threshold, this act, this potential is created. And this is I'm not going to deep into the theory why this has created, but the exchange of ions which creates this much of potential. This is called action potential. And this happens in all the neurons, whether it's <coughs> it, this is related with the heart, this is related with the brain. So in each and every uh, neurons, this kind of action takes place. So this was the basic how body uh, uh, electricity is created. Let us talk about EEG. EEG is more related by the brain signals. It is non-invasive. Non-invasive means in which we need not to put any needle into the brain or into the part of the body. So it's non-invasive mapping of electrical activity of the brain measured from standard location of the scalp surface. Scalp means our head. <clears throat> Basically, EEG is used for clinical purposes for two things. To study the sleep disorders and it is also used particularly for epilepsy patients if you know the epilepsy kind of thing in which brain starts working some weird things and the person gets faint so EEG is particularly used for these two disorders <coughs> I just wanted to show you the different EEG waveforms if uh, EEG basically uh, uh, whatever function our body do with the brain, its range is around 0.5 hertz to 80 hertz, <coughs> and we have divided all these things into like uh, alpha, beta, gamma. So any activity whose frequency is frequency is 0.5 to 4 hertz, which is created when we have a deep sleep. So this kind of waveform is achieved when we are in deep sleep. From 4 to 8 hertz is called theta. Theta is like a, uh, it's fatigue predominant wave forms in children. This is theta is this one. Then if you go higher is beta from 13 to 35 hertz. This is for mental effort. If we are studying, we are uh, trying to understand some concept, then <coughs> this wave forms is uh, created. So our uh, when we take the EEG from the brain, we divide all kind of uh, signals into this range, gamma, alpha, beta, theta, and its range is 0.5 hertz to 80 hertz. To take the EEG, we use the electrode, we use a mesh kind of structure, and we, uh, that is a mesh, uh, mesh or it's kind of a net we put on the head. So, <coughs> It has electrodes, like it can have 24 channel system. The experiment, which, which uh, the uh, readings which I took, is 16 channel system. It can go up to 64 channel system. So slowly, with the increasing channel system, we are increasing the accuracy, or you can say the resolution of that thing. So <clears throat> these are the points from where we take the uh, readings. So normally, we divide the scalp into two parts, left part and right part and then front part and back part. So these are the position of electrodes. Uh, for front we use F, for back side we use P symbol, and for center we use C symbol. Now, if we divide EEG, we, have, we will find three kind of activities. One is spontaneous activity. Spontaneous means when we are doing nothing, with a normal activity of brain, so this activity goes on continuous in the living individuals. We means we are not, uh, and uh, we are, my brain is not doing any uh, uh, abnormal thing. Then this kind of activity takes place, and this is about 100 microvolt measure on the scalp. Scalp means we are taking from the top of our head, but it's about one to two millivolt if we take it from the inside of surface of the brain. Because low conductivity of scale, when the uh, volt, when we try to take from outside, then the voltage reading reduces, and its frequency, as I told you, is from one hertz to about 50 to 80 hertz. That is useful. Another uh, uh, EEG is evoked. Evoked means we stimulate something into the brain, and 
uh, potential is created, the another potential is created. So this EEG arises in response to a stimulus. This stimulus may be some electric stimulus, maybe some visual stimulus. Like <clears throat> we have to take that suppose we are watching a movie, then our EEG signal is little bit different from the regular signal because we are looking, we are thinking. So from this part of the brain, if we if some channel is here on the back part of our head, then that signal will be different. So that is evoked potential. Last thing, like a bioelectricity event, bioelectric events that is produced by single neurons. And if you have to take the output from single neuron, we have to, you have to use micro electrode, which particularly pinpointedly try to <coughs> contact with a single neuron or say some tens of neurons because they are uh, neurons are very very small so they can be examined using micro electrodes <coughs> some spontaneous EEG in sleep these are the waveforms uh, we should know that in deep sleep you know it's 0.5 to say 8 hertz then uh, 0 0.5 to 4 hertz then 4 to 8 hertz so at different stage of sleep these are some kind of you can say signature of EEG so I'm just giving you the idea what is EEG is and how the signal is. And I gave a very brief idea about the generation of EEG. That uh, it's uh, what's the RAM? Just a second. Uh, RAM sleep. Uh, in my opinion, RAM sleep is basically away from sleep. What the eye moves? Hmm? What the eye moves? Uh, that your eye moves very quickly, that's how high when you are deep sleep. Oh, okay. Actually, I just took the data. I didn't. That's it. As I told you, that. Uh, any signal, the action potential is created by stimulation. So the generator behind EEG is EPSPF, just missed this. It's excitatory postsynaptic potential. Excitatory means you stimulate something and then it's creating. So when neuron is excited by another neuron, as I told you that the action potential travels and it excites another neuron, then the signal is created. So in this manner, the EEG is created. Now the important thing about my research, that is how we are thinking of a brain. So brain is basically, uh, for my modeling, is chaotic. Chaotic means it's not stable. All the time, some activity is going on via, neutron, uh, via uh, neurons or something else. Some electrical activity is going on. So brain is never sleeping, you can say. So it's always chaotic. It's unstable. I'm modeling my brain as a non-linear, non-stationary, non-Gaussian, asynchronous and noisy model. And uh, it is unpredictable unpredict in fine grain. If we uh, want to predict that uh, this should be happen, it's not necessary that this kind of voltage can be created. Excuse me, this is a basic question. Uh, the signal is from the neuron or? Uh, yeah, that's the point I just want to tell you about the masses of Yeah, because I see uh, yeah, uh, Let me show you here. Uh, let me show you. This is our brain. And in this small part, around 10 to power 4 to 10 to power 5 neurons in 1 centimeter square. Okay. So our electrode will cover this much area. So this is not uh, created by single neuron. For single neuron, we have to use some micro electrode and that's not sure that it will going to contact to a single neuron. It may be tens or hundreds. So normal EEG is created, that's called mesoscopic view. Mesoscopic means it's not by single, but it's by a group of neurons whose range is around. No, I mean physically, just... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the neurons? Yeah, neurons. Really? Naturally. Look, uh, EEG or whatever signals we are getting is not by a single neuron. It's, a, you can say, the superposition of electricity generated by oh. millions of neurons. And just put in the head or no just I, I mean that the neuron in the in the hand or someone else is the same as something in the head or no look the thing uh, these are cells and cells I mean, for, for the example, senses for the sleeping all of the body just sleep 
in my model, brain is unstable and chaotic. It means it's working all the time. Uh, working doesn't mean that we are thinking, but when you are sleeping, some uh, you know some dreams are going on. Okay. Something is going on. Uh, we, actually, we don't know at what is happening. But uh, in terms of if uh, we take the EEG at the sleep time, we are not getting the zero. Uh, I forget to uh, give you one thing. Look, the last thing, cerebral death. <laughs> <laughs> then all the signal is zero. <laughs> Look, the last. <laughs> if it stops working, it means. It's dead. So. And it, is it a, yeah, is it the difference between the you, you are just, you have the deep sleep, with dream, or no dream? Or is now? <coughs> Actually, uh, Actually, when you have dreams, or is the web stage, the web that I would do? Um, I mean, you mean that mm -hmm. the, maybe you are in the deep sleep? But you have the dream and it just changed to REM sleep. And if you Just remember this question because I, I may have to prepare for tomorrow <laughs> presentation. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, I won't ask. The best And EEG is mesoscopic neural pool activity. Uh, I'm just going to define what is mesoscopic, what is microscopic, and what is macroscopic. Uh, mesoscopic neural pool means uh, neurons are making a pool, and that activity we are uh, collecting in form of EEG. Question. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is why is the non-stationary or non uh, why brain is unstationary, non-stationary? Yeah. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, this is an assumption when you take a model. Uh, we have assumption that my model is stationary, or my model is uh, linear, or my model is non-linear. Non -linear. So for my purpose, I am taking this one as non-stationary. The reason is that I am getting the electrical signal all the time. If I am not getting signal, then I can say that it is stationary. Uh, I think, uh, well, for example, if you get a signal, it's uh, for a certain period, for certain state, you know somebody in a state and the signal is stationary in some period after okay, that. Okay, I have to stop that about stationary. You didn't say it oh. correctly. Stationary means the statistics is not no signal. Oh, you wanted to say, why is this stationary? Yeah, yeah. why is this okay, stationary? It's something different also. Mm -hmm. But it's not something you have no signal. But I think for the brain, it's for example in the each period. But yeah, yeah I, I'm talking about like because okay. it sounds like stationary is no signal, but it's not. Okay, yeah, okay. you are right. Uh, so I, um, I don't want to get No, 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 you are right. We, so. If I take a. Uh, uh, okay, can you start for? Sorry. Yeah, Dr. Cheng is correct. Normally, stationarity means uh, is more on statistically based. Suppose if we take the correlation at different times, <coughs> R x at k, k means this interval. If this correlation does not depend upon the uh, like k is positive, say k is 5 here and k is minus 5 here. If this is same as rx minus k, then it's stationary. For the random signals, it means if we take the correlation between 2 at say 5 time interval and then 5 time interval minus here, it should remain the same. Uh, Dr. Singh, am I right? Uh, actually, if you, you saw strict sensation, we basically all the statistics are the same, so the distribution doesn't depend on yeah. Yeah, this is the time, or you can say difference of the time. So if my correlation does not depend upon uh, like uh, positive or negativeness of uh, the time, it is stationary. So what is your camera here? Hmm? Your camera is the camera. 
This is X. R X. X. Oh, this is R. R. Oh, you yeah. yeah. R. Correlation coefficient. <coughs> and correlation is expectation of, suppose this is T1, this is T2. Expectation of X at T1, X at T2. This is normally of this one. And it, if this expectation depends upon... It's not, not plus k minus k, but it's more like plus k, k equal to r x k plus t, something like that. Anyway, maybe yeah, I'm a little bit missing the definition of uh, this one, but it's sim something expectation of the value of x here and value of x here. And it should depend upon the difference, not on its absolute value. Suppose k is 5, if I'm taking k, t, uh, say t3, t4 here, and the difference is t equal to 5, if it remains same, it means it's stationary. It means the distribution is similar, the, the homogeneous. Dr. Chang, any comment? Did I say correct or not? You didn't say correct, precisely, but physically, you're, you're well, the strict sign should be the all statistics uh, doesn't depend on time. If you say the y sign stationary, I, if I remember correctly, it's something like the mean and variance, like push second order statistics. Uh, but I need to double check. Should I go ahead? So when uh, we have to model a brain, we can think the human mind in three scopes, like microscopic view, mesoscopic view, and macroscopic view. Microscopic means if we are talking about a single neuron, that how the voltage is created from a single neuron, that is microscopic. Means we are talking about an individual neuron, how the potential is created, that we were discussing in the initial level, that's microscopic view. But when we take the EEG, we are not getting the signal from single one, but we are not taking the whole neurons at a time, but we are taking, say, uh, if we have divided it in 24 channels, so it means one channel is covering a particular few centimeters area of the skull. So that is microscopic. And microscopic is normally said means overall, if you talk about the brain function, overall brain function, on a broad view, that is microscopic. So uh, I have defined the things here, that what is action potential, that is microscopic view. Macroscopic means uh, uh, it's done uh, in the large domain, the behavior of the brain in the large domains. And the uh, mesoscopic means intervening level, like, neither very small or not overall. <coughs> now comes the objective of my research. Basically what I am going to try I had to find out the spectral and wavelet analysis of event related. Event related means our brain do lot of events like, uh, for example, flickering of eyes. We just uh, move our eyes. Uh, we are listening to very soothing music. We are in a tense condition. So there are maybe thousands of events. And I want to have a spectral means, a Fourier kind of uh, like spectral uh, analysis and wavelet analysis. And what I have to study basically, <coughs> uh, the dynamics and mechanism, how the dynamics of human brain and mechanics of human uh, changes. I have to classify the mental tasks using EEG signals. That if I can make a signature of EEG signal of different events, like I'm moving my hand, uh, uh, hand on uh, like this one. I am waving the uh, hand. So I have to make some, uh, what should I say, that signature of mental task. Wherever mental is, means our brain is involved. So I have to uh, make a signature of brain function. Then I have to explain means how this all things happen on a very small level. Means not a, as a macroscopic, but on mesoscopic level, how the things happen, how I am getting that, those signals. <coughs> That is a basic objective, and uh, for this one, we are. Uh, I'm getting data as I told you from India. So uh, my friend is a neurologist, uh, and he has taken around 50 people of the age of 20 to 30. They, it is not clinical data. They are not the patient. Uh, like uh, uh, they are not uh, uh, like uh, I should say, um, 
epilepsy kind of or who needs the EEG. These are the healthy guys who are taking and I have to use, I don't uh, have much idea, but I have to use hidden Marco model, some uh, back rotation neural network, sensor voting, support <coughs> machine for my signal. But right now what I am trying to do, I don't know about that thing, I, but I was told that you have to use those methods in finding out the modeling. So if you use this classifier, what feature, what new feature? Ah, just, uh, if you will see this one, then I will explain more. <coughs> Normal, you see, uh, his eye is constant, we are getting a constant sig signal, okay? And just consider now video that when he will close his eyes, his signal will change and that will that is a kind of signature of a single event <coughs> look he just cl closes his eyes and you can see the dip in the EEG signal uh, it's constant right now but as soon as there will be some eyes movement there will be some change look here Look here, he just uh, flick his eyes here. So as soon as he is moving his eyes, how old is he? Hmm? 25. <laughs> I don't know, I don't even know. Really. So normally uh, the EG signal is constant. So this is one example that if I get this data, how can I model? The eye movements with this data. <laughs> yeah, each line. This 16 channel. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Sorry, each channel for the each. Yeah, each channel is divided. I can. F means for here. Yeah. Yeah, there are 16 channels. 16 channels? Yeah. Give it, give it that it's 16. Yeah, the electrode yeah. are 16. <laughs> and what is uh, the resolution of your data? For example, uh, how many number you have for each second? Uh, you mean to the sampling rate? Yeah. Uh, so I have to check. I didn't know this one. Uh, right now I don't have the idea, but I will okay. definitely tell you from this thing because this is a. Now, how to do this one? If you have uh, noticed that whenever I is there's a flickering in the eye, the signal goes like this. Okay, not all the channels, but few of the channels are, are having this kind of depth. So now I will try to use. There are few methods like ARMA method, uh, the uh, Pranis method. There are four or five methods which are used to model a system. Suppose my, uh, how we use the modeling, like suppose a system is SZ, we give a unit impulse function to this one. Suppose my output is X. And so I can use these methods to get the approximation value, approximated value of this one using Prony method, using Shanks method, all pole method and then I can find out the error. Error means the difference between the assumed value and the exact value. So, so why, why do you need to learn how to generate this data? Pardon? So I mean, your objective is to classify. So, but why do you need to learn how to generate the data? Uh, right now, with this data, I'm trying to make a model of eye flickering. Model means yeah. a kind of FG, which is some BZ over AZ, and I will try to find out the coefficient B0, B1, B2, B3. A system is defined in terms of some poles and zeros, so I'm trying to find it on that. And this will be kind of a 
approximate data. This is going to approximate my model. Then I will take two, three data more of high flickering, and then I will com compare whether my data, whether my modeling is correct or deviated from the thing. I think yeah, what you yeah, what you find. Hmm? What you find after analyzing that? Any system is defined our model can by HZ. So I'm trying to find out the model of this one. All of the, all of the channels? Yeah, this is the kind of first step. It's not it's not going to the final object. And the model shows uh, A system is all whenever you have a system, how do you define a system? By some uh, what is called uh, impulse response. Any uh, in control system, we remember any system we define in terms of x z, the z transform of that one. Which suppose if the our input is x n, you know what should be the y n. It should be x n and we'll look and h n h n. So you need the impulse response or the z transform of impulse response. That's I'm trying to find out at the initial level for my first. Point. So after learning this function. Mm -hmm. How are you going to use it? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. The basic thing is that once you will model it, then whenever you require, suppose you got an EG, you don't have the video. If it compares with HZ, it means you can say that this is eye flickering. And this is just one example. There are so many brain functions, like a, suppose I just want to check one thing. I am moving my hand. Okay, so I take a data. Now I'm thinking that I'm moving my hand, but I didn't move it. So what should be the difference of it? So I'm trying to create a signature of all brain fun most of the brain functions. My target is to create signatures of different uh, brain functions. Brain function can be anything like eye movement, uh, hand movement, leg movement. It's the signal starts from here. So suppose I have to do any uh, mechanical, uh, any body movement, I'm thinking that I'm moving my hand, but I didn't move. Another thing, I'm thinking that I'm moving my hand and I'm moving too. So what should be the difference in brain signal? So I just want to, miss my objective is to whatever we think, how it reacts with EEG. Yeah, so, okay, so if you learn the function of uh, the hand movement, Mm -hmm. If you have a, a time series of uh, eye movement, mm -hmm. how, how do you compare the... Both will have different edge. Both will have different kind of voltage uh, movement. Both will have different channels. Means, suppose I am doing the thought process. Thought process has different part of the brain. Move, uh, eye uh, blinking has different part of the brain. So different channels. So by checking, okay, this channel is giving me this signal. So if I have a standard uh, signature of that one, I can just compare. So I'm trying to create the signatures. So how do you compare this to us? Comparing? You need to calculate some d distance between this kind of type, sim type of signal of and that type of signal. Comparison can be done by like a... Uh, uh. Like we can use correlation between two signals. We can check whether they are correlated or not. If one is x1, other is x2, we can find out the correlation. But correlation, if you shift the time series a bit, the correlation can be very different. Uh, you are right. But the thing is that we have to find out the signalization. I am just giving an example. I still not worked on that one. I just started working on finding out the model of that one. but. This may be the future goal. Yeah. Okay. And undoubtedly, Professor is there. <laughs> he will guide me how to proceed in this field. <laughs> and you find that you found that the model? Oh no, just working on that. No, I'm working on the coding. And about this channel, mm -hmm. uh, does it matter that the the order of the channels mm -hmm. for the analyzing or not? Naturally, because the thing is that uh, right now I'm converting all this data into Excel sheet and then reading that Excel sheet into MATLAB. So it is taking the data of all uh, the channels. But what I'm trying to do when I f when there's a flickering of I, I start my timing of the data from there to say from one second to 
three second or four second quarter thing, where there is the impact of that uh, eye filtering. No, I think that if, for example, we change, yeah, we just uh, switch the second and third one, this is for the example, channels, the anomalies. The thing is that, suppose we trigger eyes here, so I can take data from here to here. This is 102 to 104. So I can take the data from here. I need not to take the all data. The reason is that most of the time, there is no function. It's just looking constantly. So as soon as it flicked his eye, I just did. And which method do you want to just, com just combine all of the The reason channels. is that, but I have to think he may have uh, like uh, effect on this, 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 this channel, <coughs> there is no effect on this one. In another function, he may have this change change and this is not changed. So different, uh, you know, different channels means you are taking signal from different part of the brain. So I have to check that if I do some action, where it has the impact. It has the impact only in this part or it has impact on all these parts. So no, I mean that how we can how you want to combine all of the channels together? It was combining. something that the baby said is the learning method for that, the iteration. Look, to be very frank, I just converted into Excel sheet and when oh, I converted into Excel that? sheet, it took all the data from but all the channels. And you didn't read something? No, okay. I didn't do it anything by my cell phone. I just converted into that one and I uh, used it in math. Okay. I, I guess, I don't know, I guess each, like, each channel you can consider that as a one feature. <coughs> you have a like, feature vector of 30 or something. And yeah, you are right. Means even, even I can take the data individually from here. Like if I select channel 1 or if I select channel 2, by the, if I select the channel by name, like one channel I can get the data individually. But initially I am trying to do with the 16 channels all together, but slowly I, uh, I can go forward and back. And have the other guys work on this one or not? <coughs> I have, whatever I have studied, nobody has studied on the signature of the uh, this one. And most of the work uh, I have studied in EEG is on one in clinical side, they are doing on epilepsy, they are going on uh, working on sleep disorders. If I talk about uh, uh, more into non-clinical side, they are working on brain-computer interface. What do you mean signature? Huh? What do you mean signature? Signature means uh, like for e if I talk about ECG, uh, a pure, uh, uh, when the healthy heart is there. Before answering this question, is there any proof that is there any available signature for, for example, each event? Uh, yeah, did you read anything that's Said for example, uh, is there available any signature for uh, any? Uh, actually, when I got this project from my friend, uh, who is a neurologist and a professor in a medical college, he told me that, like for a healthy heart, we have this kind of PQRS signal, if you remember. It's for heart. For heart, ECG signal, if you remember. This is a signature of a healthy heart ECG. Doctors look at this one and say, okay, your heart is good. So it's a kind of uh, signature for healthy heart. And uh, what I'm trying to do, uh, like I can try to find out some, uh, it's uh, HZ of its event. I can try to find out a mapping of that one. Uh, mapping is a particular map of eye flickering or this one. So right now, the object is not exactly clear what I'm going to do, but I have started working on that one. Slowly, I will see what is feasible, what is not feasible. So, have you ever watched the, the online movie or just a movie on YouTube? They, they try to use each to control the drive. Yeah, yeah, I put it. That is, that is uh, yeah, they are working on BCI. In this, <coughs> in this Brain picture, I think they, they should know the feature of uh, Look, uh, what they are trying, they are trying uh, you like are, if you are thinking right, then there, there should be a feature, otherwise, you yeah, yeah. Have they are control. look, they are thinking work is going on. As uh, I discussed with my prof uh, another professor who is working on EEG, he said that working is going on this one, they are more working on thought process only. That you have to move left, you are thinking you are more, move, uh, you are you have to move left, that is more on thought process. That is not uh, on uh, like moving hand, moving leg.
so little bit different but still work is going on on this field other about the signature <laughs> but, yeah the signature was the signature <laughs> signature exactly signature means that if dr c and e g of a put in the mechanic from the yeah. I have to uh, do it when I will do it then only I can say okay there is a difference right now I don't have all the data I just got a sample data if I work something on it I will get they will say okay uh, uh, I will say okay send me this kind of data so let me collect all the data and analyze this one Uh, yeah, sorry. You want what type of signature? Yeah, the mic means it's a simple thing. Like uh, you know, when EEG is taking, it's very difficult for any person to st for, for if EEG goes for 45 minutes, and if, if uh, you tell the patient you don't have to move the move the eyes, you don't have to do this one, you have to just lay straight. It's very hectic for any patient. During the EEG, he's thinking something. Naturally, if you have to say stay for five, 45 minutes, you don't have to move, you will think something, your eyes will be blinking, then naturally there will be impact on the EEG signals. And that EEG signals will be kind of distorted due to these movements. So uh, if doctor will say, okay, he has done eyes movement, oh, he is thinking something. So it's kind of, uh, we want to make that kind of uh, signature that you can immediately think by looking at the EEG. That he, that he is <coughs> he's just sleeping, just dreaming or something. Yeah, like yeah. Means, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Means Means actually, you will detect from the signals. From the signals. Means when he see on the signals, he can say, okay, he is doing like this, he is doing like this. And this is the part where I'm getting that data without noise or without any other movements. And and before no one did this research before? Look, uh, as I told you, whatever research papers I have gone through, I didn't find any signature terms like this one. Second thing, the guy who, uh, who gave me this project, he is a doctor, he is a neurologist, professor in a medical college. He gave me this one, he is continuously attending the conferences. So he gave me the feedback, there is no work on this field. Or they are, people are working but uh, he told me that these guys are working on it. So I am more getting faith on that guy because he is in this field. I have to do the, do the engineering part, he is doing the medical part. But I remember Annie was reading the paper about the, the brain that just, just showed. Uh, look, the BCI is still going on. Yeah. Brain computer interfa interface. That, that paper was on the task process. For example, somebody started thinking yeah. about the eating and drinking, and after that, I don't know. Uh, so, yes, as the we have uh, some slide of the brain uh, about the activity on the brain, and uh, based on this, the paper try to estimate what is the, for example, uh, the next image, and try to learn what is the. But if this one for all of the activity. Of yeah, as I showed, this is starting. So I am working on it. Let us see okay. where the ways, where the path goes with the time. So.